wine business. Some people would think, wow, okay, you're in your 20s, you're female. What made you get into wine? Like, out of all the things that a 20-year-old would be interested in doing and to start their first business, why wine? Okay, so today in this video, I'm going to actually teach you guys how to start up um, beginner style, starting up your own wine business, and how to actually um, get it out Conducting there. any business, I always stress that you should always do your research and make sure it's something that you want to start. Second of all, after you do your research, Start, um, you know, going to different things, different events around your area that have something that interests you. know, wine, as far as this video is concerned, I would say start going to a lot of wine, um, wine tastings. Go to a lot of um, college, college research programs that, you know, have to deal with wine. Um, do your research online. Go to different wine stores, wine shops. Talk to the people that work there. They normally, 10 times out of 10, have a passion for wine and can actually explain the process to you and can actually send you the people that can get you started up. So always remember your first and second rules to starting your first wine company is always do the research. Second of all, actually start, once you start doing that research, go out to these places and ask questions physically so you can actually meet these people. So that way later on down the line, if you have any more questions or answers, you can always go back to those people and just learn a little bit more. Hey, here's a fun fact. Did you know most blush wines go great with desserts? So that means whenever you're having a pink Moscato, maybe even a white Zippendale or a Rosé, make sure you pair it up with like some good sweet chocolates or brownies or even strawberries. It's a great dessert wine and it'll definitely get the mood so spectacular. So don't forget that fun fact. Start getting opinions. Go around your friends and family um, as far as learn a little bit about their taste buds when it comes to wine. This is where you kind of want to know um, what the people in your area or the audience target that you're trying to um, you're trying to go at is really looking for. Because you don't want to make, I don't know, you don't want to make a Zinfandel, but everyone that you're around that you could possibly make money off of likes Moscatos or they like Cabernets or they like Sangrias because then you're not making something that actually can profit off of, you know, that you can profit off of right then and there. So that's the third rule. Start doing your polls. Get feedback um, from different people about the different types of wines they like. Um, is it really just an alcohol percentage? Is it a flavor that most people go to? Um, start asking males and females. That way you know if your target audience is majority males, you want to make sure you get something that attracts them. So that way, whether they're buying it for themselves or they're buying it for their girlfriend, their mom, their their sister, their aunties, it's still being bought by them as well. So that's rule number three. So after we got those three rules out the way, we're actually going to go to step number four. Okay, so we got those three rules out the way. It's time to hurry up and just get this over and get to four. We got a couple more left and then I promise you, I have more videos to go a little bit into wine as far as the- um, Different types of wines, as far as your Moscatos, your Zippendales, your Rieslings, your Cabernets, your Champagnes, I explain- That's which each one is and what those are good to pair with as far as food choice wise, atmosphere and, and things of that nature. If you need those videos as well, I definitely have you, um, but Let's get back into this video. So, step four. After you, you know, did your research, you have went and stepped out there and you talked to people in that industry and you also have gotten feedback from your family and friends and people around you. Now it's actually time to start looking for places to produce your wine. Whether, whether you make it from home or you find a distribution company that can work with you and actually help you make those wines, um locally or somewhere in that area or even if you have to go out of state um this is that time to start now now a lot of times when you go to um 
wine tastings at different wineries and places like that they do have options to where you can come and make your own types of wine and you can um you know set up a day they do a wine tasting with you you pick what um, types of wines or flavors you like and you kind of go from there and then they you know that's whatever policies they go by or you can also go through an online business where you can actually order the kit yourself and you could go home and it can be ordered to you and you can do that from home and make it from home now there's two things that i like about each and there's two things that i don't like about well there's one thing i don't like about each and there's probably one thing i like about both so let's go into that so the good thing about working with a company that is locally is that you can also be able to um get that hands-on experience and still learn a little bit more about the company and the industry that you're going to each and every time you go and you produce that you kind of create like a relationship and a bond with that company um one thing that i don't like about it is that it's more costly when you go through a company and you have them help you um you do save money more when you're making it at home or you know in a facility to where you're not having to pay someone to store it and supply the tools um if you could cut some of that out it may be a little bit cheaper but you make your money's worth more when you make it from home so with that being said those are the one good things i like about it and the one bad thing so with the online the good thing i like about it is that um you're your own test taster you're going with the process day by day is with you wherever you store it is normally somewhere that you're around 24 7 so you can check up on it so more so you're always doing it from home so you're probably storing like an attic or in a basement or just somewhere where it's closed and that and no, nothing can get in it and there's really no sunlight you know kind of the bad thing i do not like about it um is actually two one is that um when you order kits like that, you're not getting as much as what you would want to make from if you were going to a company. My best suggestion is to order your kits offline. And if you need any like flavorings or anything to make stuff taste a certain type of way, I would go into those stores that are locally and just kind of talk to them. And that's where that's that rule number two plays a hand where you're going to meet these people in these industries so you can call them up and they can supply you with those um, different vendors or even have that sold in the store so where you can go and get it so my fifth and final step to actually starting off your own wine company business is to put it into work put it into play if you have a certain type of wine that you want to make do your research talk to the type of people in that industry that's doing that type of wine or even know about it get the feedback if it's something that the people want you know start looking for facilities or start ordering your products and then number five go for it that's all i can say you cannot you cannot succeed in life without going for something you have to at least have fear in your heart one time for something that you love in order to go for those dreams and do what you want to do that's all i can say if you have a dream and there's never no fear in your heart or no or nothing that scares you about going for that dream do not do it because it's something that you really go not. for you can never get a yes or no from something if you never take that chance you can never know if you're going to fail or succeed from it if you do not try and that's what i did and i got a lot of great feedback and it's worked for me and i build relationships feel free to comment i feel free to um you know message back you know, you can always hit me up on my social medias and message me contact info. I'll hit you up and we can talk more a little bit about it. If you want any more videos about wine and specifically, let me know. I'll make specific videos just, you know, detailing what you want to know about certain things, whether it's um, the different things about the flavoring, um, the price wise, as far as the startup costs, where to get some of these things, let me know and I can help you out as well.